In this Debaco University video, if you think you've got hoplatin viroid, well here I'm going to go over some of the symptoms of this viroid to see if they match up to what you might be seeing or should be on the lookout for. All right, I'm going to go over some of the symptoms of hoplite and viroid, and we can see it's quite variable. Some are coloration changes, some are morphological changes. So first off, I want to really um, give you an, a good resource, this CanaMed 23 presentation uh, by Dr. Zamir Punja. Uh, provides some of the great images here. I says screenshots from the presentation he gave. If you want to hear from him directly, by sure check this um, link out here. In the description, I've got all my references to some other sources I used as well, uh, but another good resource to take a look at. So first off, I want you to understand that while the disease can be the same or the virus can be the same, the looks can vary. Two cannabis plants infected with the same virus can have a wide degree of different visual symptoms. They'll test the same, but there's different ways they can be infected. To catch it early it does take a trained eye and seeing a lot of plants and seeing sadly a lot of infected plants allows you to pick it out a little bit sooner. You can see we have stunting obviously here, vegetative plants, pre-flower, high susceptibility of genotype shows stunting. Sometimes the roots will be affected and not really getting a great proliferation of roots even though they're not discolored. And then the inflorescence or the flowers can also be infected. So really affects roots, shoots, as well as final flower. Uh, stage of development does have um, an impact, so keep that in mind, that while symptoms you may see are in part dependent on the stage of development of the plant, and also when and physically on the plant where the point of infection may have occurred. Early flowering plants can tend to be the most symptomatic, or plants going into flower is where you tend to get that. You can see here stunting that occurs, different changes in morphology, all things that kind of just, this don't quite look right. Common symptoms, again, while this seemed like a pretty long and extensive list, slow growth, like I said, stunting, or there was kind of decreased internode spacing, leaf malfor malformations, leaf chlorosis, can mimic an iron deficiency. So kind of over here in these um, images, you can see it kind of looks like an iron deficiency with those upper leaves being a little lighter in coloration, lighter green to yellow coloration. Um, leaf chlorosis is a symptom. Brittle stems, reduced root formation, as we can see the comparison between the healthy and infected. Horizontal growth that can grow up like an exponential curve, so it kind of gets a little bit more of this distinctive kind of U-shaped, parabola-shaped. A greater leaf overlap, reduced water intake, flower destruction, smaller and less dense, basically equals reduced yields in the end, which is not good. There's also uh, been evidence of this stem or node swelling. I'm not sure how common this is, but uh, another um, YouTube video had shown this, that they got a positive case. This is a confirmed case of hoplite and viroid. May not be commonly reported, but it definitely does happen, this kind of node swelling that we see here. Very distinctive, um, something very unique that would stick out. Might be an indication if you're seeing that, you might want to get that plant tested. Now, this can vary greatly on the plant, so this is why when sampling, different portions of the plant should be taken. Special attention to the roots for hoplite and can initially accumulate in this area. You can see here where we're getting hoplite and viad negative and positive. So the THC um, percentage went from 27.8 down to 15.9. We lost some terpenes, so keep in mind that the smaller flowers at the bundle plant due to hoplite and viral infection had 42% lower THC and 15% lower terpenes compared to normal sized healthy flowers on the same plant. Great information again provided by uh, in that presentation I'll link at the top as well as some others um, in the description. Now this can vary by cultivar, so this is gaining a lot of uh, interest, and rightfully so. And while there are no cultivars that have been shown to be completely resistant to hoplite and viroid, there are some early data indicators that some may be more tolerant than others. This could potentially be used as part of a breeding program. Uh, this can show consistency. So this is right now in the early stages, but there definitely does seem to be some variability to resistance. Um, or at least tolerance, as I say. No one's really resistant, at least tolerance. I love um, these kind of really close zoomed up images of the trichomes. There's reduced size and shape of the trichomes compared to the healthy to the infected. Now keep in mind there's not really a reduction in number of trichomes, but there really is a reduction in the kind of quality of trichomes. And this directly impacts the compounds that the plant, of course, can produce. 
The infected trichomes are basically underdeveloped. They kind of look like what would be a full balloon. They kind of look like they're just deflated and kind of um, much smaller. Um, as a result, they actually have less in them. So this is another stunting effect, not only of the plant, but stunting effect of the trichomes, and that is, again, reducing overall yields. And then lastly here, uh, impacts on variety by cultivar. You know, we're looking at healthy versus, you know, infected. Uh, healthy here hanging to dry and sadly infected hanging to dry here. Of course, it's really a matter of how much the plant uh, cannabinoids are reduced. So keep in mind that the cultivar does have an impact on this. Okay, a couple genomes listed here, plant heights, flower to stem length, fresh flower weight, THC content, and we can see the changes uh, that do occur. Now, this isn't an indica only, this isn't a sativa only, an auto rudalis, a hybrid. Um, we're kind of lumping these all together. Well, there's no yet indication that indica, sativa, or rudalis is more or less acceptable. It's kind of genotype or cultivar specific. So again, trying to give you just that general idea of some things to kind of be a little bit on the lookout for. Um, and I've got other videos on the channel on this because this is becoming uh, more recognized. And that's a good thing. Something to be identified and then develop a plan to kind of remove this as the hopeful, the long-term goal.